Okay, I have no idea. I'm back with the second part of why or how to get people interested in physics. And um, what you can do is um, you start in, start yourself a little Facebook group. Or uh, there's a group on Facebook called Science on Facebook. It's a group strictly full of science groups, and they'll post random things, questions, pictures, information, new discoveries, and they kind of it's a wealth of knowledge from those who interact there i'm part of it i'm pretty sure my group got, my group's actually part of it too and um we just talk about stuff they'll post pictures they'll just be conversations and you learn some new things and you'll gain friends and you will gain uh ads to your groups if you have one and i recommend at having one because in any school, there will be at least one of the kid that likes science like you do. And you can start a group with them and then add like, go to the science on Facebook and you can request people to join your group that are, or just even add people on their own by just adding them by having an open group. And they'll join, and you'll get some college students and other people who have the knowledge. In, I do this, and I'll just ask a random question, maybe multiple questions a day, but just over random stuff. I don't give any equations, because not everybody knows the equations, and I just ask them, like, what is, I don't really ask this, but to make it simple, what is string theory in a nutshell? I, um, then I just wait for people what they see. And I'll tell them whether they're right or wrong. Right or wrong. Biggest thing to do, make sure you only ask questions you know. Or, if you want to ask a question, I do. I'll do like, physics question. Couple, like a tab. Difficulty. As soon as you put the difficulty in, that means you already know the answer. That's how my group's set to know. It means you'll know the answer. Just ask, like, if you want to know, do physics question, and uh, question mark, and then your question. People will learn. No, sure, no. As soon as you put a difficulty in, that means that would be how hard it would took you to learn or for or other people to learn it. So, don't yeah, do stuff that you know and don't rely on other people to do it. And, um, start one and uh, invite people. Ask some of your teachers if you're in high school or college and just ask them, hey, uh, what about this? And ask them random stuff. There'll be a good chance a lot of your teachers don't know the answer to your questions because it's kind of so far out there. Alright. Sorry, I just had a long pause there, but, um, yeah, um, you should, uh, start the group and just share your knowledge. And whenever you get home from school, take, like, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, look up random thing, like, just type in, like, string theory. Uh, what is string theory? Type it in and look it up. And you should do that like 10 minutes every day, and then you'll have, you will probably be smarter than the guy next to you who will be saying, What is string theory? Doesn't it have, does it have like strings and tying them in knots or stuff like that? Trust me, I've had people ask that question. And, um, ask them questions, ask the questions, and just start the group, and you will. I'm guaranteed you will uh, grow more knowledge and from what you research than probably what you'll learn in school. Because most of school is just a maturity test until you get to college where you're actually learning for your career. The states, the state's standards aren't that high, so it's not hard to pass. 
which means you'll be able to eat, which means not a whole lot of work goes into them. So, do the research. If you ever want to, I used to do this as I mentioned the other year, make like a little like essay or report out of it and just see if it's somewhere. I'm guaranteed someone will be impressed by that, whether it's in college or something, but just a mass in large collection of stuff. And put dates on it. That way, what you'll be able to do is notice any changes that have occurred with the field. And you'll be able to see what your knowledge has changed from them. That way you'll be able to tell the difference of what happens. So, yeah, just do that. Like, do like, start off with like a five, page, five paragraph essay. Proper essay format. And just leave it with what you've learned. Don't do anything outstretched or too difficult. And then leave it for that and put a date on it. And then come back like... Next year in high school, let's just say you do this your sophomore year. Come back your junior year. Copy all of that. Well, don't copy it. But see what you knew then. Add on to it. And then do it again your senior year. Do it again. Add on what you've add added to that. Because by then, you, if you were really into it, probably would have taken AP physics. And probably would have taken it as a, uh, taken the uh, AP test for it. And you'll notice that every year, even if you're adding a little bit, par a paragraph more, you'll notice your writing improved, your your scientific article made a little bit more sense, and it's a little bit more factually correct because you just research random stuff. So just make it a goal, like do 200, I know it's kind of a stretch, 200 like two-page papers by the end of your sophomore year. Just, just, now hold on. That's 400 pages, yes. Don't print them, just keep them saved on your computer. And then, or on Google Docs, whichever one works fine. And then just keep those there, and then you'll always know what you used to know. And then just add on to those. You can stick with those same, or you can add new ones, too. It doesn't matter, but at least make sure you go over a good chunk of those that you already did. And don't leave them closed. Don't leave a closed book on them, because there's always more. And there's always new fact checks coming out. When you're working with theoretical ideas, everything does change sooner or later. Um, thank you for watching this. I hope this helps you become a little bit more interested and a good way to help increase your knowledge. And I'm going to say this, there will be a lot of people that think you are practically a genius because you will know more than I'm going to say at least 9 out of 10 people. At least. You will know that much more than them. And the other 10 may not know anything much to talk about, but they may know stuff you don't. Maybe they know more, bio, more about biology than you. That's fine. But you'll know more about why the universe is and how it came to be. Thank you for watching this. And stay tuned for more videos and more hints. I will also have more computer tricks coming up really soon. To protect you and keep your computer safe uh, quickly.